Hello everyone, it's Kevin from KJD Electronics, and welcome back to another one-stop programming video for absolute beginners on Python. In the last video, we went over installing Python and setting up the PyCharm IDE. Today, we're going to look at the basics of functions and variables in Python. So we're going to stick with the Hello World theme, so we're going to keep that in our program. But if we go down to line 3 here, we're going to define a function. Now the way that's done is Python is you type def and then your function name followed by an opening closing parenthesis and then a colon. So I'm going to start typing and type def main open close parenthesis and a colon. So if you noticed as we were typing def, PyCharm is actually suggesting what we would type as we were typing it. And you'll notice that this is really going to be super helpful as we start to develop here. So we're going to go down to the next line by hitting enter. And you'll notice that PyCharm automatically indents for us. Python is a white space sensitive language. That means that spaces matter. So each line can only have one command on it. And it's indented by spaces. So everything that's on this indent level is going to be in the main function. If I come down here and now I'm on this main all the way left, not indented level, this is no longer in the main function. And hopefully we'll see what that means in a minute here. So I'm going to move our hello world into the main function. So now what this is, this is a Python program with a function that's called main that prints hello world. So we're going to try running the program to see what happens. So you have to run main and we just see process finished with exit code zero. Now, we don't see hello world. Our program didn't do anything. And that's because we never called the main function. So that's the nice thing about functions, is you get to control when they get called and when they do things. So we're gonna go down on line four here, and we're gonna type main, and then open and close parenthesis. Now what this is saying, is we're going to define a function called main that prints hello world and then we're going to call it. So if we go up run main, now we see that we print hello world down here. Now the cool thing about functions is that they're 100% reusable and that's what they're designed for. They're designed to be used over and over again to do similar tasks. So if I type main again, and then we run this again. We can also run it down here with this play button. It's going to print hello world two times. So that's really powerful. Uh, and that allows us to make generic code to do the same thing multiple times. Now we're going to look at variables. To define a variable in Python, you simply type a name. Any arbitrary name will do. I'll call it my first variable equals hello world. And I'll only use one exclamation point this time. So now we're going to run this again and see what happens. And we're going to see that it didn't actually do anything different. We still see hello world printed out twice. And that's because we never did anything with our variable. And if we look at it, PyCharm is nice enough to tell us that it's, it's grayed out in this kind of gray color, which means that it was never used. So if we instead replace this string in the print function with my first variable, and then we run it, we'll see that we now have the version with one exclamation point. So we could change this to have two in the variable and run it again. And now we've got two. Another thing that we could do is we could actually move the definition of my first variable, variable outside of the function. So now notice that as I have it removed, it's saying unresolved reference to my first variable. That's the IDE telling you that this is an error and this isn't going to work. If we tried to run it, we would get an error. So now I'm going to paste that my first variable back in. And it's now defined that this is what's called global. This my first variable, since it's defined at this zero indent level, would be accessible anywhere in the file. We can run it and we see hello world again. So now, what if I tried this? What if I moved it back inside of our main function? And then I tried in between when I call both main functions, 
I try to print my first variable again. Now the IDE is going to give us an error, but I'm going to run it anyway to see what happens. If you notice, it prints hello world once before it fails. And that's because Python is an interpreted versus compiled language. And what that means is it executes each line one at a time all the way until the end of the file. And it won't stop unless it gets an error. So it's going to execute the first line, nothing there, nothing to do. Line two, we're defining a function called main. Line three, I'm going to expect an indent and uh, the arguments for what to do in that function. So we've got the indent, and we're saying we're going to declare a variable called my first variable, and then we're going to print my first variable. We then leave that indent level, which means everything in this scope, the scope of the main function at this first indent level, we can't access that anymore. It's gone. You can only access things at a higher indent level, and it must be defined previously in the file because it's, it's executed sequentially. If I were to do this and define my first variable here, that will work. Now you're like, Kevin, you just told me it needed to be sequentially in the file. Well, here's a, a, the tricky part. First line, nothing to do. Second line, defining a function. Third line, we're going to print my first variable. I don't, know, I don't need to know what my first variable is yet because I don't need to actually execute this. I just know that's what I do when I call main. Line four, nothing to do. Line five, oh, my first variable is hello world. Then I call main, and now I know what my first variable is. So I can print it the first time. Then print my first variable again. It was defined up here. And then finally, we call main again to print it a third time. What would happen if I moved it down one line to here? Now notice how this still isn't complaining. It, it, it says the IDE isn't giving us an error here. But you'll notice when we run it, we do get an error. And that's because by the time that main is running here, we haven't defined my first variable yet. So that's just kind of a, a really brief overview of kind of scope and variables and functions. But I wanna go over one more thing in this video, and that's function arguments. You may have been noticing in this video, I've been referring to print as a function, and that's because it is. It takes an argument that it prints out to the console. What if I were to, you know, define another function called hello world, and print hello world. So this is just a regular old function. We know exactly how to use it. Um, we just call it the same way. So instead of calling main, let's call hello world and or main and then hello world. And let's fix our reference error by defining this appropriately. And now let's run our file. So we see we print hello world once from main with one exclamation or with, with two exclamation points. Then we print my first variable, two exclamation points. And then we call the hello world function and it prints with one exclamation point. What if I were to say in between these parentheses, hello world? Now what that's saying is that this function requires an argument. And that argument is essentially a variable that I can reference in the function. So now instead of printing the string literal hello world, we're going to print the variable hello world. So now what happens if we try to run it now? You'll notice we print the first two hello worlds, but then we get an error saying that hello world missing one required positional argument, hello world. What that's telling us is that our hello world function requires an argument called hello world, but we didn't give it one. So we pass arguments in these parentheses. So if I take my first variable and now I pass it in to hello world and run it, we'll see that it works just fine. We see hello world with two exclamation points printed out three times. So essentially what we've just done is we've made our own print function, except it's called hello world and not print. And it subsequently calls the print function. But you get the idea that print is just a function 
that does something special with this string that makes it appear in the console. That's cool. In the next video, we're going to learn how to manage variables of different types and go more in depth with functions and how they're used. And to showcase that, we're going to be building my favorite type of application, a simple calculator that we'll use over the next couple of videos. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments or on the dedicated KJD Electronics forum thread that I've linked in the description. If there's anything glaring that I missed, I'll try to answer it in the beginning of the next video that will be coming out in the next few days. Thanks for watching. I'm Kevin from KJD Electronics. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.